Uh, our special guest is in here again. You know, we kind of been talking about this whole Don't Mute DC campaign and, you know, just keeping our cultural institutions in place and supporting them and uplifting them when sometimes it seems like people don't understand the value of these brands, uh -huh. of the music. And so I said, man, let's get this guy in here. I've been trying to get him in here for a while, but I guess we finally got the, the RSVP. Ladies and gentlemen, finally. we got my man E <laughs> from Eat, Malik. A.K.A. Mr. E, A.K.A. All Homage in the building. Good What's morning, Malik. Up, One of my favorite people in the whole world. Yes, Ma dig. Malik, man, look. I said, let's get you on because, you know, your brand, the Eat brand, is another representation of the culture. Sure. Um, I remember I was watching uh, Housewives of Atlanta, yeah. and uh, the guy that Portia was talking to at the time, I remember on his computer he had an Eat sticker. And it's like, if you see that that brand, that label, you know is DC. Right, straight you, up. You know is home. So it is truly a representation of home. It's something that, again, we've got to preserve. We've mm -hmm. got to uplift. So tell us a little bit about how the Eat brand came to be. Because I know we got a lot of parents in their car listening like, man, right. my kid got that on right now. Right. So well, just ask want, me for they, some. <laughs> they want Fortnite and Eat clothes. And That's right. Straight up. And they Eat New Balances. <laughs> straight so, up, right? so tell us a little bit about your journey to creating such a, uh, what is now like an iconic brand in the, in the right. city so i started off as a photographer actually um from graduating uh at virginia state um once i was doing that i had to get a watermark i was using my logo for a watermark shout out to my man michael caldwell um we knew each other since missing teeth he made my logo for me okay um, and what after, was it was it eat at that time yeah, it, was, it was still eat it okay. was just eat um elevate all the time if you don't eat you die in the street and then after using my watermark, my friends was just like, you know what, you should you should uh, make some T-shirts. And for the longest, I was like, you know, I don't really got time. I was working two jobs, helping my family out and everything. So eventually, they was like, you know, they just kept pressing me out so much. I was like, you know, I'm just gonna make them some T-shirts. And then I made, these t -shirts. I made them like 30 T. I made 30 T-shirts. And then like two <laughs> weeks later, the whole city wanted some T-shirts. Um, really? And then it just took off from there. But since starting my brand. Um, I'm most proud to have launched my uh, nonprofit organization, uh, Eat Cares, where we've been doing our job in the community. We've been definitely doing our part. That, make, that makes me most proud. And then um, I've just been able to explore different avenues with, you know, music. DJing, yeah. rapping, everything. Oh, uh, so you so you got your own stuff going on outside of of just yeah, the, sure. the clothes. Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to set the you know the perfect example for an entrepreneur. You yeah. Know? It's a new it's a new day in DC. It's like the DC Renaissance going on right now where mm. we got a bunch of young people doing a lot of different things. Yeah. So I just want to, you know, get my feet wet too. And I think that's important to 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 stress because a lot of times we see these different stories on television and we're thinking, man, everything is just bad. Every, you know, yeah. th there's kind of a, a picture that gets painted that things are just really, really bad. And then you've got someone like yourself that's like, you're light. And you're saying, hey, there's opportunity out here. There's renaissance going on out here. So sure. for people who may not have gotten their stuff started yet or they, you know, in their mind, they don't have the most positive outlook on their life. What would you say to, to people listening to say, hey, man, get in the game, get something started, build your own brand? Because you had to leave your jobs, yeah. Yeah, you definitely. know, to do this. So. Um, no one would do it for you and just have some passion behind it and walk with God. I heard something really good yesterday. It's not always... Um, ready, aim, fire. Sometimes it's ready, fire, and then aim. And I feel like it's the same thing with entrepreneurship. You got to get out there first, and then you got to find your lane, your direction. You know, it's all going to show you. You're going you're gonna to be led to your path, with, especially with entrepreneurship. So that's just what I try to stress to people for real, for real. Just yeah. get to it. Yeah. Now, with E Cares, too, you try to make sure you do a lot of sports stuff and different stuff. Yeah, I see yeah. you do. Um, football uh what what makes you you're, you're a sports guy yeah, yeah for sure so you try to make sure that the kids are, are straight with that right yeah because um football taught me so much like outside of uh, outside of the home mm -hmm. as far as like being responsible Teamwork. Um, yeah taking care of the next man doing it for somebody else and um you know that's something that i i think you know I'm, i thank god for almost every day it's like if i wasn't playing football I don't know what I would have been up to because I got some friends that didn't play football and I don't I can't account for them anymore yeah but, um, so you, who'd you play football for Beacon House Falcons all day Beacon, Beacon House <laughs> Falcons yeah okay. you dig but um <laughs> yeah so that's just something I try to do and it's um whatever I do with eCares it's all about providing privilege and me being able to play football that's a slight privilege like people you know kids might not know it while they're playing but it's a lot of kids that need to be on that field every day at practice, that need to be around friends, need to learn those principles, you know, that don't have that privilege. So whatever we do with EKS is just providing those simple privileges. Because mm -hmm. I have friends that just 
never had a ride to the field couldn't never play sports you know right, yeah. was in the streets all day so you look, you're, you're also doing scholarships yeah, now sure. as well i think i saw on your page you were gearing up to do a scholarship for virginia state tell us a little bit yeah, for sure. more about that so we're doing the, um our second uh college tour uh our first college tour was two years ago we just you know went around did pop-ups but you know we've been doing a little bit better for ourselves so now <laughs> we're doing the college tour um we got seven schools all hbcus and we're doing a seminar. Uh, we're giving away a five hundred dollars scholarship and doing a pop up shop too. You know, so, so we just stopping by showing love. Y'all to everybody. hear that? Y'all better go try to get some free money now. Yeah, make so, sure y'all come to those seminars. All the schools on the list. How can people get involved with Eat Kids if if they're hearing about it and and they they want their child to be a part of of what you're doing? Um. So. That, that's a very good question because a lot of people have been asking it. Right now, we, we've been just, uh, working exclusively with uh, DYRS, Department of Youth uh, Rehabilitation. Okay. But I'm I'm trying. I've been I've been conjuring up something very special for the summertime. Okay. I want to bring back my boys eat program. Okay. And so when when we got when everything makes sense and we can do it the right way, we we'll let you I'm know. I'm definitely letting, <laughs> putting all the information out there because you know I want to help as many people as I can. Yeah, and I also wanted to ask too because I, I remember we were looking on your page one day and you had put these um, varsity very nice looking varsity jackets. Sure. I mean they were very nice. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And uh, and I was all for it until I saw the price tag. It was a thousand dollars. Now, up. now um, and I and we read through all the comments because people were going back and forth. Right. I mean it started they like were a, mad. a I, I, I said what? I, I love you it. You know, um, I was like, yeah, Malik. Why would Malik it. put this this jacket up, you know, and and uh, that you know kids are gonna want, you know people are gonna right. want, but it's a thousand dollars, and uh, you kind of kept saying, hey, just you kind of la- laughed at it all, like you kind of yeah, it, was, it, was, like, it was working, it was doing what I was supposed to. It do. was doing. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the strategy behind, because you only put a certain amount of jackets right. up, four thousand dollars. They sold out pretty instantly. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm upset because I still I hit them. I so just, what was listen, the strategy behind the thousand dollar eat varsity jacket? We put out varsity jackets before they weren't yeah. a thousand dollars. Right, right. Um, they sold well and everything. So um, this time around, I told you know I, I I had got you know with a with a new better manufacturer that could you know do some different colors and everything. So I told my team it was supposed to be a gift for the new year to my team where they can okay. make their own custom jackets. You know, one on one, we gonna be the only people in the city you know walking around with these jackets. Okay. But when, once they warm. Everybody was like, man, I want that jacket. But then my team was like, man, you better not get nobody out jacket because you told us we was on the <laughs> You said this was exclusive, Malik. So I was like, you know what? If people want them, they're $1,000. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, bet, this, you know, we about to do the college tour. We can do a scholarship or whatever with the, uh, with the money. Mm. And so um, I put it out there, but I didn't tell people that because I wanted people to, you know, just talk about it. Word of mouth is the best form of advertising. So while people were talking down on it, people were defending me. With all that going on, I was reaching like way more people. Like right. my engagement. my, my yeah. engagement, my yeah. impressions that day on Twitter and Instagram were crazy, like crazy in the millions, you mm. know. And that's what it was all about. And while everybody was talking about it, I'm just watching like everything on my website, like stuff just selling out. Like wow. people still just hearing about me. And then <laughs> it was even people buying the jacket because they really liked it. They they was buying it because everybody was hating on it. They was buying it because everybody knew about it. And it was mm-hmm. the talk of the town, regardless. That's just what I wanted to do. It was it's like. I, that's what I knew it was gonna happen. Yeah. Cause I'm I'm writing. Cause I'm when I first get the picture, I'm writing the caption, and I'm just like thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? I was, <laughs> so you just put that up. <laughs> yeah, it was just. Yeah, it was like, and I was like, I was like, we about what? to release these, and these are thousand dollars. You know, just forget it. Let's just see. Just put it out there. You got it. Yeah. You got it. If you don't, I if don't know. you don't, you don't. You know what I'm saying? If they and I was like, even if they don't sell, I'm gonna make one of each size of every color. If they don't sell, I love these jackets. I'm the type of person mm. like when I really like one like something that I make. I really don't want to sell it for real, so I just be like, if y'all don't, if y'all don't buy them, like I wait till I gain weight to <laughs> fit all these jackets. And you wear I yourself. hang these in my house or put these in my store when I get my store, and I just look at them myself. You know, yeah. I don't mind. And so that, if they don't sell, I don't. I don't and know. that's the last thing I want to ask you too before we get into the great debate. Moving forward, like now you've had partnerships with Shoe City, I believe. Shoe City. You partnered with New Balance. New you Balance, had your own DTL, yeah, which, and Pizza. Yeah. So so tell us about these collaborations and what this has meant for your business and where what's the next level for you business wise for the Eat brand. So with every every collaboration we do is um, they have to come full circle with us. They have to first uh, tend to the initiative. And that's elevated all the time. If you don't eat, you die in the street. The community involvement. So that's how all my partnerships start for real. They they reach out to us and we say, all right, but how can you help? How can you help DC? Okay. And then we go from there. Okay. So that's that's all it's been. But it's all been a blessing. Shout out to Shoe City. That was like the first people that opened the doors for me. Mm-hmm. And um, that's just been a crazy experience. Like mm-hmm. from 
at that point when I made my first shoe with New Balance, with, with New Balance, I was I only had my brand out for like two years, and wow. when I had my clothes in Shoe City, I was only out for like a year and a half. So, and and they've been a big help uh, at Shoe City with just you know basically walking us through it all because I was new to business and designing clothes, and they right. were just like you know what we we're gonna support you. We know how it is. We're gonna help you out, and they just been very transparent. That's and, wonderful. Um, same thing with uh, DTLR and Pisa, uh, New Balance. Like, whenever we need something, like, you know, I get on the phone, they right there. So I yeah. appreciate all that. And um, I just want to uh, show show everybody how, you know, how, how far we can stretch. So yeah. this is just the beginning. You know, I, I made a shoe with New Balance, but I'm going to be the first person to make a shoe with five different sports brands, you know? Mm. All right. Well, Malik, man, let everybody know how they can follow you and continue to support your movement. And I, I will say this: when I first saw Eat, the first thing, so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in, th- I'm 30 and older crowd. So the first thing that came to mind for me was like Madness and Shooters right. and Shout you know, hobo. All yeah. City Hobo. Like, so were you inspired by those those other brands that have come before you in DC? Yeah, definitely. Shout out to uh, Uncle Ed, Eddie Van. Um, shout out to Kurt Bone. Um, you know that's what I I grew up on. So and I never in a million years thought that I would be you know in the same senses as those guys. But um, yeah. it's not it's not just with them passing the torch, but it's it's now up to me to take it to the next level. Absolutely. Because we we haven't gotten our credit. Absolutely. Um, in, in in plenty of areas, but especially fashion and how how we influence the culture. So Eat is going to be that brand that goes you know all the way global, and it's going to be DC written all over. Very nice. All right, how do we follow you? Where's the website? How we get more information? Allhomage.com, A-L-L-H-O-M-A-G-E. That's the same thing for Instagram, Twitter, everything, Facebook. Or you could just type in Eat in Google. You know, we've been doing so much work. You could type in Eat and we'll come up. It's going to pop up first thing. Eat clothes. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> eat, keep doing your thing. All homage. Hey, listen, Malik's going to hang out with us. Yes. Sure. Up next, it's the great debate. So we're going to switch it, switch the vibe a little bit because I feel like you're quite the personality from what I've seen on Instagram. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, d- Here we uh, go. DJ Money, <laughs> Shay Parker, the yeah, great debate you. with Malik. I didn't know-